you say so, and you are the only one that I look around, look and get the job done for me. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? I always want to be the one that God will use to do his job rather than devil using me to do his dirty job. You understand? I like to be the one that God is using to get his job done. Not that the devil is using me. No, I don't like that. Because the devil can't function here. He needs somebody. Okay? But be careful who you yield yourself to. Praise God. Again, let look. Part of that reason is also the creation of man. And God said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the... I'm reading Genesis 1 from 26 to 28. And then let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the, uh, all other creeping things. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he uh, them. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, uh, the, uh, uh, the fish of the sea and over the birds and the heaven and over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, if God created man in his own image, he's as valuable as himself. Praise God. That man is as what? He's as valuable as God himself. He's another part of God that he created. So look at every man in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of their physical what? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Then, Psalm 8, verse 3 to 5. When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him but a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Man is made to rule over the moon, over the stars, over all the other work of the hand of God. Man is the highest of the creation of God. After he has created every other thing, he created man to rule them, to reign and have dominion over them. So man, God made man in his own class, not in the class of all other things that he created. Anytime I preach, I always tell you that, that science tells you that you are mama, but me, I'm not mama. Hello, are you mama? No, I'm not, I'm not mama. That's biology. The Bible's understanding of human being is that he made you in his image. So that's a special class of making. It's different from the all other things that he made. All other things he made, he said, let plants come out from the soil. Let animals come out from the soil. Let fish come out from the water. They are, he just commanded, but you, he sat down. To form your shape so that you will look like him. Praise God. And then he did combine, you know, if you want to do projects and props supervise you. But in this one, three props supervise my creation. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are the supervisor to ensure that this project must be very successful. And I'm the project. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you getting, so I can't fail. Those three people can't put something in me. I'm not come here and fail. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So these are the worth and the value of a man to God. First Peter. Now, that, that, that's talking about the, if man was worthless, then it will not be necessary to redeem him. But on, not only is man worth something to God, he's so valuable that the cost of redemption for man could only be paid for by God himself. Psalm 49, verse 7 to 8 of God. So if God's redemption of man required that his own son must die for a man in this world that has been lost to be redeemed, are you with me? Are you with me? That tells you how important that thing he wants to go and redeem is that it has to cost him his own lesson. Let's do some economics here. What is the cost of, a, of anything? Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the value of a thing? What is the worth of a thing? Economists will tell you that uh, opportunity lost. Okay? Are you getting what I'm saying? 
whatever you need to use your money to do that you should have used that same money to do but you didn't do for you to come and use it to do this is the weight of that thing in your hand if I use if I use two thousand dollars to get one object what else could I have used my two thousand dollars for in the market ah <laughs> That two thousand dollars, a dollar is. Uh, yeah, I just put it myself briefly there, and it shows it's working. I can see it's working. All right, praise the Lord. Are you get what I'm saying? So, uh, if that is going to like the two thousand dollar is going to like about three million of Nigerian money, what could I have used my three million to do naturally, and I didn't use it to do it, and now use it to go and buy an object. That object must be so valuable, more than three million worth of things that I will have done. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's the value of what I bought, not really what it looks to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, alternative for gone, opportunity lost, is what is the cost of whatever you have. So to lose Jesus Christ in order to gain me means I am valuable. That it will cost him his own son. To have me. Praise God. Are you ready now? Sure, very sure. No serenity. All right. Let's give a round of applause unto them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we are getting there. We want to have um, our guest speaker was speaking the other time. So, can you bring uh, Dr. Seriki up now, please? I think we are ready now. Yes. Doctor, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so we I have introduced Dr. Seriki the other time. Do you want me to reintroduce him so that uh, the people that are just coming you will know he's um let me quickly a quick one uh, he started the other time but we're not hearing him we want to hear everything that everyone god has put in the heart of everyone to to speak so that we will gain god has put something specific in the heart of every speaker in this place everyone a minister and uh for you and for me and we don't want to miss anything the full name is Oluwa Shegun Seriki. Pastor Shegun is a minister of the gospel and son of and son in C2FM. He has been following daddy since 2006. Can you imagine somebody following one since 2006? How many years now? And has served God in Nigeria and China and now in the Republic of Ireland. He's married to Taiwo Seriki and they are blessed with two children, Jemima and Josiah. Did I call Jemima? Is it Jemima or Jemima? Jemima, oh, <laughs> it's English. <laughs> English is my second language. Jemima and Josiah, God bless you. Please welcome Dr. Seriki this morning. Doctor, over to you. Thank you, thank you, mommy. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, mommy. Uh, very quickly, once again, I want to appreciate Daddy and Mommy for this privilege. As Mommy has mentioned, Daddy is my life coach I've been, and spiritual father. I've been following him since June 2006, uh, since my days in Futa. And I want to thank him and Daddy, I mean, himself and mommy for this privilege. I don't take it for granted. Very quickly, I will have the, I have the privilege to speak to us on the topic breaking barriers in Asia and the UK. By the grace of God, I have served God uh, as a pastor in Nigeria, also as a missionary in China, and now I'm serving God here in uh, the Republic of Ireland. Uh, and sometimes I walk also cross over to the UK. And uh, one of the uh, key things that I would like to start with today is uh, some of the lessons that we have learned under God, under Baba. And um, I think I'll just be sharing four, four key points about how we can break barriers in these countries, in these regions. And as I mentioned the last time, I said that yes, there is some form of areas where you can be successful in career and also in academics. Yes, that's part of it. 
or from a spiritual standpoint, what do we need? What are the equipment that we need? And the very first one, uh, as I mentioned in, uh, in our manual, in our workshop manual, is the spirit of power and wisdom. Spirit of power, wisdom. Our uh, first scripture is First Corinthians four, verse twenty. First Corinthians four, verse twenty. He says, "For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power." One thing that God has blessed that in with is the ability to walk both in the dimension of power and also in the wisdom of God. In order for us to be able to take these lands for God, we need power. We need a power dimension. We also need wisdom as well. And I remember back in China then, I can say that um, when we started the fellowship on campus, although it was forbidden to um, do fellowship or do, to do any form of religious activity on campus, but God helped us. We started and we grew. We started growing, growing, growing. We grew to 20, we grew to 25, we grew to over 50. And we had to move even out of a room to a common room. From a common room, we moved outside completely. And we're meeting outside. And I remember most of the people that that came to Christ were all led to the supernatural dimension. Super, even the very first convert I had, that one was even serious. She's not Jesus face to face. While I was speaking to her, Jesus appeared to her. Hallelujah. That's the power dimension. Even me that I'm speaking, I've not, I've not seen Jesus more than one to her. Then he just saw Jesus. And Jesus can speak to her on a daily basis, for days, on end. Hallelujah. So that's the power dimension. That's one of the key things that he, God has blessed um, uh, Daddy with is working in that power dimension. We need the power dimension. We need the spirit of power, but we also need the spirit of wisdom. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I remember one of the key wisdom that Baba gave me there was that don't ever do a press conference don't ever do a press, don't speak to the press. No matter the award they want to give you. No matter, well, I remember one time the press said they wanted to give me an award. Daddy said, don't go. Send someone else to go and collect it for you. Hallelujah. We have to uh, understand the aspect of wisdom. And why I say wisdom also is because some of these countries, they are used to spiritism. They already, they know the power dimension. Hallelujah. In China, for instance, if you want to pray for someone, they can, they'll give you their hand like this. And they say, Pastor, and you look at my hand. What is God saying through my hands? And then they want you to read their palms for them. And so, as in this if you are not careful, you can veer into the dimension where you say, Well, see, this is what they understand. Let me help them read their palm. Hallelujah. No. While we are working in the power dimension, and a lot of African pastors have done that. When they moved to China, they start started doing spiritism. I remember I went to one revival, and after three hours, the pastor has not even opened the scripture. We were just doing deliverance. After three hours, no, no scripture, nothing, nothing. There was no scripture. We didn't open Bible at all. Three hours. People were falling all over the place and all that. But there was no scripture. How can you do three hours service and then do not one scripture quoted, not one opening of the Bible? That's strange. Hallelujah. So we'll be very careful if we are ministering to these people. They are already used to the spiritual dimension. But we must be careful not to veer over into an extreme. Hallelujah. The second uh, point, as I mentioned in the workshop manual, is that we must have a genuine love for the lost. Yeah. Ephesians 4 verse 15 says that, but speak the truth in love. One of the things we must be careful of is that, you know, especially when you go abroad and you face racism, you can begin to hate the people of the land. You say, ah, these people are just too wicked. Ah, they are too racist. And then imagine you go and someone call you nigger. Or someone call you and say, I remember in China someone asked me, I said, do you people live on trees? Do you live on trees? I live on trees. And all of that. If someone has something like that, you have to be very, very careful that you don't grow bitter in your heart towards the people of the land. You cannot minister to people you don't love. If you don't love them, you cannot minister to them. There's no way. You can't you can, you can be effective in the work of God, in breaking barriers, in reaching out to the lost, if you don't love them. The Bible speaks about Jesus in John 11, 36. He said, even the Jews, then the Jews said, Behold, how he loved him. Will you be open enough to love the people of the land? Despite the racism, despite the, uh, the, the, the different things. Even in the UK, happens to some, some people. You know, some people will see evil people, they'll say, Ah, the Yamiri people. Yamiri. Some people say, Hausa, they'll say, Ah, Malam. Some of those things are racist. 
You don't know. They say, ah, I'll say this one. If you don't love them, you can't reach them. Hallelujah. So we have to be careful. We have to love them. We have to allow the love of God to be shed abroad in our heart. Because you can't, you can't bring people to Christ that you don't love. Hallelujah. Third thing I want to be, uh, say uh, uh, this morning is that we must have the spirit of discernment. I remember when I reached, I, when I came to Ireland, when I came to Europe, more of my engagement with people has been more on the teaching dimension. That's been teaching people. Teaching people. Why? Because people already had, they had the gospel years ago. They were the ones that brought the gospel to us. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, in the book of Acts chapter 17, we notice that Paul is tasking the enemy. Rather, you will see him in Thessaloniki, in Thessalonica, in Berea, Athens, he was teaching. Sometimes the Bible said that he even entered into debates with them. So in countries like that are very enlightened, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to know the scripture. You need to know what you believe. I remember sometime ago here, I said something and people began to argue. I said, ah, no, 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 no. You can't say that. I said that every single problem in this world has an answer in scripture. And someone came and said, no, what do you mean by, okay, he's smoking in the Bible, he's smoking in the Bible, you have to go and, you have to be able to read your scripture to the point that you decide, should I teach or should I go in the power dimension? Should I teach, should we should have the spirit of the Sabbath? And all the gifts of the spirit must be operational in our lives. We must not be too rigid, as it were. When Paul got, as in that scripture, Acts 17, Paul got to Berea, Paul got to Thessalonica, he got to a place called Areopagos, the temple of Areopagos. The Bible says every day he was dialoguing with them, arguing with them. But it's only someone that knows what they believe that can stand before people and begin to trash out these issues. Because people will come to you, they'll come to you about LGBT uh, stuff, they'll come to you about mental health issues, they'll come to you about all these things. Yes. And you have to be able to dissect the word that we'll be able to teach. We'll show them where these things are in scripture and the stance of God against these things. And bring up help us in Jesus' name. And lastly, I'm cautious of time, we must have long-term thinking. A lot of missionaries or a lot of people that are mission-minded don't have long-term thinking. They want to come to and say, well, in fact, let's come and go back to my country. No! Baba, Baba Ubudari has been in Akure for more, nearly 20 or 30 years or more now. Hallelujah. If you don't have long term thinking, I would like to read the scripture, Jeremiah 29 from verse 4 to 7. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all those that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Verse 5, it says, Build ye houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Verse 6, let ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wife for your sons, and give you your daughters to the husbands, that they may be sons and daughters. We must be careful that we should have a long-term mindset. Don't just say, I want to just do the work one year, I'm out of here. No. That's not how the mission of the whole thing is. The white people that brought the gospel to us, they came, they settled down, and they died amongst us. Hallelujah. So we must have that same mindset that we are not only here for the short term, but we are here for the long term. We are here for the long haul. Otherwise, we are going to just do a shabby work and we leave. That has been a career for almost 30 years, if I'm correct. And he has not left, he has not checked out. Even if things become difficult. So we must have that mindset. Some of us will say, I'm not going to learn the language of the country. If you, if you don't learn the language, then how do you reach them? You must settle down, learn the language, you must settle down, learn the culture, immerse yourself into the culture. I remember when I was in China, I had to have a Chinese name. I had to have a Chinese name. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 22, he said, to the weak, I became weak, that I may gain the weak. I have made all things to all men. I remember Baba used to tell us that you must have a missionary stomach. Some of us, you get to a country, you say, I'm you see about it, you know, I'll bring my food from Nigeria. If you don't integrate, if you don't make them feel that you are there for the long term, they won't open up to you. 
if you don't if you don't make them feel that you are actually interested in them and you are not only there to just grab their souls and leave but rather you are there to impact them and i pray god will help us in jesus name my time is up and i'll just tell us tell us just keep on in prayer as we go ahead let's just say father i receive grace to walk in the spirit of wisdom and power for effectiveness in breaking into the nations in the name of jesus in breaking barriers in the nations in the name of jesus let's lift up our hands and pray let's lift up our hands and pray father in the name of jesus lord i commit myself into your hands i walk in i receive grace i receive grace to carry i receive grace to walk in the spirit of power and wisdom in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, and his goodness is in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Sariki. Um, doctor has pointed out a lot of things, and uh, I believe we have uh, been blessed. By the time um, the third person has uh, finished, that is going to uh, give us some things about the point and they uh, charge us more. And uh, the next um, minister here is Dr. Michael Abiodun Udebo. Can you bring him up, please? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Mike is um, ready. His introduction Dr. Michael Mike Udebo is an ordained minister of the gospel. He serves the will of God as an author exhorter and teacher of God's word. He joined the ministry in 2009 and has served in various capacities to date. He's an assistant professor at Florida Gulf Coast University, FGCU, USA, and is married to Anu Oluwapo Udiebo. They are blessed with his son, Michael, and the word Uzo. They are blessed with Michael Uzo. <laughs> Okay, and he's married to Anulua for Anne. We call her Anne. So welcome, Dr. Mike. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mommy. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's been a glorious life. It's been a glorious life. So don't forget to carry the week to find the technical challenges. So right now. Uh, Uh, before I begin, I want to appreciate uh, Daddy, Mommy. Uh, it's a privilege for a son to be given a platform uh, of the fathers. When Jesus Christ was to begin it with his ministry, uh, the Bible says at the baptism, there was a voice that came forth from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And after Jesus Christ has spent some years you know, carrying out the activities and the will of the Father, the Mount of Transfiguration, that voice came again you know, and said, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. All right, so uh, I, we do not take this for granted. You know, it's a privilege, you know, to be given audience, uh, to be given a platform, you know, to minister to the people of God. And uh, uh, just before I begin, I will just uh, go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we trust you uh, for all tracks, even at this uh, point. Uh, we thank you, Father Lord, for all you have been doing since the beginning of this uh, meeting. And Lord, we ask as we move forward to this glory come, that you lead us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Uh, just like everybody has, uh, has you know, always uh, started out with, I'm also going to you know, share my experience you know, joining, uh, joining the commission you know, or joining Daddy. Daddy happens to be my spiritual father, my mentor, and my life coach. All right. Um, I uh, first encountered him uh, sometimes uh, in uh, 2006, 2007, there about. Uh, it was a meeting in the fellowship. And we had um, uh, our president then, uh, Pastor Toba, they, you know, uh, invited him to come for a, a night vigil. And uh, I guess he was held up somewhere. I know we kept on waiting and waiting. I think we waited for almost 35 to 45 minutes. Now, like, who is this man of God that everybody, you know, we're all waiting for, you know? And when they arrived, 
manifestation of the spirits and the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, and that was the first encounter I had. You know, and it, it ingrained something in my heart. Uh, down the line, you know, my friends, you know, uh, Pastor Shelby Sereki, you know, uh, Pastor Israel, Pastor Mesa, you know, finally joined the commission. And uh, not being one person, you know, to, to join the bandwagon. And I said, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not joining Parapo, you know, and all that. But it happened. You know, that I was uh, in the fellowship uh, one day because I usually stayed back or come back to the fellowship to read. Because I believe there's an anointing you know, wherever the children of God are gathered. As I was locked up in the equipment shed, and you know, the spirit of God came upon me, you know, and he told me, Go and meet that man, or else. And I remember that morning, I packed my bag and ran straight to, to that space. Unfortunately, uh, he was not home, I guess he had gone on assignment, uh, but we later fixed the meeting, you know, and I, I joined the ministry. And it has been a forward, forward journey since that time, you know, I have uh, had gotten the privilege you know, to serve different uh, aspects of the ministry and I have been better for it. The person I am today, you know, the man I am today, the husband I am today, the father I am today, it can be linked to you know, all the levels, to all the trainings I have got under this ministry. And I want to encourage you, perhaps we are waiting for a audible voice from God. Perhaps you know you are waiting you know, for a sign. You are trying to give out a piece. You don't need to. Right? If God has brought you here, it means it's an assignment for you here. Uh, there is a reason why this program was put forth. I happen you know, to be in the know. We were at the auspice you know, of setting up a major crusade in, 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 the, in the country. You know, when God broke this word and said we need to have this conference. So, so there is a reason why God has come for and I want you to embrace it, you know, with everything that you have. You know, I want you to come into what He has for you. It is not often times, you know, that you see God come around. The Daddy has been around the world. You know, he has been commissioned to go to the continents, the islands of the world, and He has been fulfilling that mandate. God came back and said, "Go, go back, face me, another crop, another generation." It means there is something in the heart of God, and I pray you do not miss this in the name of Jesus. Um, to speak on breakthroughs, academic breakthroughs in the nation. And uh, I want to appreciate that um, because uh, it's, a, it's a very important um, aspect uh, of, um, of ministry, breakthroughs in academia, breakthroughs in academia. Uh, like I said, the uh, conflagration conference, that they will always mention about uh, Samson, you know, Samson and also uh, the foxes. A fox, we always, we only remain fox until handled by something. All right, a fox will remain is dead. All right, it will likely live and die unless it is trapped by something and fire will be set up on its tail. You know, so I want to encourage you. You know that, uh, that you are available in this meeting today. That you are in this place today. All right, it means there is a divine deposit you know, that God has. For there's something God wants you to get. And I pray you get that in the name of Jesus. I don't waste more time. I just want to speak from my okay. uh, because I, I believe I've handed over some of the workshop and materials uh, across. Now, I, I remember sometimes, I think 2013 or 2014, we wanted to go into the nations of the world. God gave us that mandate. And we decided you know, to go to India. I remember that period of time we went around you know, trying you know, to get funds. I was able to raise funds, you know, I was able to get all the documentation. And Daddy would always recommend, you know, get your passports. You know, Daddy had always had a global mindset. He always knew that even though the things of God start small, it's going to end up big. It's going to end up global. It's going to end up being generational in its impact. You know, so we went ahead. You know, and I remember going to the Indian Embassy. You know, and the woman looked through my documents and looked through ahead. And said, you know, it's going to take some time to process, you know, and all that. You know, ultimately, the only idea the few people were able to go, you know, and I felt so bad. Why? Because why would somebody hinder me access to the nations of the world? The why would somebody hinder me, you know, from fulfilling the destiny, you know, fulfilling my assignment, you know, in this ministry, you know? But we you know, went back and we were supporting with prayers, and you know, down the years, God came again with a new revelation of the disguised apostles. You know, there's something the nations of the world are looking out for. 
There is something they want. The Bible says the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. You know, and you know, based on that event, we began you know, to explore. We began to explore. There, there was another move of the prophet and the professionals. The prophet and the professional. One thing that is always you know, encourage you, if you are here today, you need to go back you know, to revisit all of the things that have been spoken before. Why? Because we are in a season of prophecy. And there was a time where we used to preach from morning to night. We used to prophesy from morning to night. And we have beaten our notebooks to the things and the words that God has spoken concerning us. But now we are in a season of prophecy. And I want to congratulate you. Why? Because we are in a season. We are in a period where things are going to move faster, where things are going to move and we are the speed of the things of the spirit. You know, and I can encourage you to walk in faith. So we can you know, encourage you know, this, this prophecy or this, this prophetic work. You know, and academics you know, became one of the major ways to access you know, the nations. And to the glory of God today, you know, we have not just entered into the nations, we have, have access to go anywhere in the world without payments. Glory to the name of the Lord. You know, I want to encourage you. You know, there's a, there's a reason God brought you, you know, to Puta. There's a reason God brought you around the academic environment. You know, God did not send that to go to the breweries. God did not send that to go to Dangote Refinery or go to Dangote Cement you know, and, and, and base there. Around the top of young believers, if you have heard the testimonies of different people, they will tell you, I met daddy while I was in school, or I met daddy while I was in youth service, or I met daddy after I just finished school. You know, there is something peculiar about that. Why? Because it is the design of God that the nations that are waiting, they are waiting for people. So they are waiting for a crop of people, a crop of professionals, a crop of people who have something that they need. So that is always called it a sandwich or meat pie gospel. You know, what they are looking for, they are looking for scientists. You know, they are looking for people who are going to do research. They are looking for people who are going to be professionals, engineers. You know, it, 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 it was becomes so amazing down the line. And even courses that we used to talk about, animal pursuit hunter, you know, wild forestry and wildlife. And the things that are not moving people into the nations. And the things that are not moving people into their destinies. And the things that are not moving people into the place of their calling and their assignments. You know, and I want to encourage you. you know, there's a reason you know that God has brought you, you know, around this. There's a reason God has brought you around this place, and I want you to embrace it. I want you to see the academic as a as a calling. I want you to see it as a means to access the nations of the world. I want you to see it as a means for you to embrace the fullness of what God has for you. There's a reason that God Paul was able to rise to God from the Old Testament. That was because he had the requisite knowledge. You know, he was trained. You know, he, was he, 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 he was he was trained under Gamaliel. It was not just that he was able to access Caesar's wisdom. He was able to go to the highest place of the land why? because he had the citizenship of Rome. You know, so there is there, there is there is there is a reason. Just like Pastor Sereki was talking about, you know, God is bringing us into the power, but He's also sending us forth with the wisdom. So there is something that the world is looking out for. There is something that the world is needing. We are going to fill that and bring it to God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory be to the name of the Lord. You know, I, I put in the workshop material, you know, Daniel. The Bible says, you know, that the king in Babylon at that time, you know, made a proclamation and asked that they should bring forth all the children you know, of, 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 of Israel. And they were not just asking for random children. They were not just asking for children in this world. They were asking for those who were of nobility, those who were skillful, those who had special skills and ability, the ability to learn languages and things like that. You know, and when they brought them, you know, the Bible says that out of those students that were selected, that Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego were also among them. You know, and you can see that you know, even though they had the skills, even though they had the academic they still needed the anointing. They still needed the function. They still needed the power. You know, and so they told you know, the king servant, they told him, ah, we will not defile ourselves. You know, and when the auction came upon them, the Bible says they were found to be ten times better. So it is not just enough you know, for you to just be a first class student. It is not just enough for you to be an excellent student. You, know, you need to have the fire of God upon you. You need to have you know, the very deposit that God is releasing through this meeting in your life. 
Why? Because it is what is going to make for excellence. By the grace of God, no, we, we have our award. <laughs> we will be giving both local and international award. But nobody cares about that. Why? Because by the next year, they will give somebody else another award. What makes you an eternal excellence, what makes you the joy of many generations, is the divine deposit of God that you have on the inside. It's the divine gift of God that is on your inside. You know, and that is why you know you need things like this. That is why you need you know, to come under you know, the other. You need to come under tray to come into a place where you get those deposits to be given to you. And the glory and the grace of God. You know, there's a scripture that says, except a man, except the Lord built the house, said they labor in me. Why? Because it says it's not it's not saying nobody nobody can do. It's not saying nobody can be a boss pastor. It's not, not saying nobody can be an excellent person. It's not saying nobody can do, can move to the place of the world, you know, with academics. But what he's saying is this that all those who make the new and correct movement in the will and the purpose and the counsel of God. You know, so I want to encourage you know, that by the grace of God, you know, we, have, we have not just come in, we have not just come in as students. You know, we are now you know, people who are teaching people who are here. No, and that gives us a very, very good platform. It gives us a very, very good place you know, to really start to the people here. Why? Because you know they want to find out you know, what, what, what what you have to tell us. You know, in the glory of praise of God, you know, I, I teach over 50 students. You no, know, and they all come to my office. You know, so I sit down, you know, I, I try to discuss with them. You know, this one tells me, you know, I I I, I am this, I am that, you know, I have this, I have that. And we are able to really start to them to the glory and the praise of God. You know, we are also able to establish things, you know, call people to come, you know, teach them the word of God, build them in faith, you know, in the concept of faith and healing, demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. So that is what, you know, academics can bring you. That is the academic, you know, breakthrough into the nations, you know, through, you know, the wisdom of God, you know, through the wisdom of God. And I want to encourage you today, you know, that, I mean, if, if, if you are here, you know, I, 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 had, I had this impression. No, and you have looked at your academics. Maybe it's not the course you, you, you chose. You know, it's, it's not the one that <laughs> it's not the one that you chose that they gave to you. You know, they, they push you somewhere. You know, or you are, you are find out you are struggling. You know, in your academic performance. You, know, you are not up to where you are supposed to be. Let me tell you, you are now in the right place. You know, one of the anointings we have in the house is an anointing for exception and excellence. Right? Even if it is not an excellent result, it becomes an exceptional result. There are people who have brought this scholarship, got it access to the nation based on different criteria. I was speaking to a beloved sister, you know, yesterday, you know, and she was explaining to me about you know the process, you know, she's trying to pursue an admission and all that things and things like that. You know, and you know, she heard some unfavorable news. But the first thing that came to her mouth is even if I'm the only person, even if they are selecting just one person, I will be the person. I said, yeah, that's the spirit of the house. Stop. <laughs> that is the spirit of the house, you know, in the you know, coming and oozing out of you. So, so one of the anointings, you know, one of one of one of the one of the one of the blessings that we have received in this house, you know, it's, a, it's a spirit of excellence and a spirit of exception. You know, a spirit of exception. We have seen James Cross with the Nobel Prize. You know, we have seen, you know, even GPS Prize. You know, you know, I, I will leave it to, to the people who have those testimonies to share it. You know, so it is it is something that is flowing in the house. So I want to make that call. You know, perhaps you know you, 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 you find that you are discouraged. Uh, perhaps you know you find out you know that your academic performance is not meeting up to bar. You know, perhaps you know you have been given a course, you know, that you know it is not what you decided to choose, it's not what you decided that you wanted. Let me tell you something, the anointing of God can come upon that and it becomes what takes you into your place of assignment, it can become what takes you into the place of destiny, it can become what takes you into the assignment and the purpose of God. All you need to do is to embrace what God has for you. All you need to do is to embrace that fire, that little fire that is being sent forth, you know, from the house in life. And I pray God is going to bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down our heads with our mouth. Pretty much run out of time as we pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you, Father Lord, because you are not just a God of power, you are a God of wisdom. You know, and just like Pastor Shedman said, you know, that you know, we are not just coming you know, in excellence of power, but we are coming in your wisdom. And one of the wisdom you are giving to us, you know, is to go through academics. You know, to enter into the nations of the world. And we thank you for that, Lord, because we are manifestations. We are, we are examples. You know, we, are, we are people who have done it. And we are here. We are here to testify. Heavenly Father, we ask that this same function, 
this same anointing will rest upon your people powerfully in the name of Jesus. The anointing for excellence and exception will be made available for everyone here tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Be well in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Daddy. I appreciate this. Thank you so much, Mommy. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mike. Wow, that was a, can I say a preacher? <laughs> he was he was preaching it. And uh, I believe you have been encouraged. People online and on ground, you are still, you want to go outside. You know, I mean, I was just uh, captivated by that preaching. You, you can note that um, he's talking from experience. And uh, when I was watching him, I begin to think, you are first a Christian before you became a doctor. You are first uh, called before you became an academic doctor. You can see that there. That it's like the calling is, you know, so we know our priorities. Yes, I'm a doctor, I'm a lecturer. I mean, university, whatever. But the first thing is that that preach, that, that thing of God. So when you are going there, make sure that you hold, you take what is important to go. And um, you will make it there. I don't have to tell you so many things. I remember what he's talking about. The time we wanted to go to India. Wow. <laughs> and you know, it's been quite some time that Daddy has been uh, saying to the nations, to the nations, to the nations. We are going to the nation. There was a time we caught uh, this African cake. You remember? How many people remember here? Africa. I said, we are taking portions of Africa. At that time, we were doing something. We didn't know that uh, people are taking portions. At times, you know the world, to the nations, to the nations. And now, it's just coming up true. It's just coming up true. That time, we went to um, um, India. And um, they were telling us that, what are we going to do? You know, what are we doing and querying us? Now, where some people are, nobody queries. No, they don't use some. In fact, when they just get there now, it's just a visa on entry. Some people, the way they are there, it's just visa on entry. They're no longer begging and feeling for for visa. Please let us come before they approve you. They just show their card. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm residing in this. I'm a bona fide resident of this country. And they just, oh, you are coming. Even though you are blind, they just give them. And now it's coming true to the nation, to the nation. Then it was giving us difficulties. Let us go and look for visa. Let us, how many of you are going? They start giving. But now it's becoming easier. That to the nations because the word of the Lord is coming to pass. It's so, it's so great. So you see, God is so, <laughs> God is so good. It's so, it's so great. It's so great. Ha. Praise the Lord. I'm just, I mean, made my day. <laughs> I'm remembering those times, and I'm just happy seeing people I know, seeing the word of God come to pass, come to pass. Now it's easy. That nation, we can go there easily. Sons can go there easily. Remember that? Let us say all of you come. And we carry we were about we were, about, we were more than five then. About six of them we went to uh, so we want to go to India to go and preach the gospel and, and then they start saying, Why are you what are you going to now they, we are not asking uh, nobody. If you want to go from there, they want what are you coming to do? If people from Canada they want to go there, they won't say what are you going to do? They just get there and just are going there. Oh, oh welcome, welcome. And that thing is coming to pass now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You know, when uh, the miracle of we pass, we, we go around. When the, this person, uh, the, 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 what is it now? And he's beside you. Just make sure that your own is coming. You don't have to be jealous. Ah, you see me now that. No, don't worry. Your own will come. God has started with this person. The miracle loaf will go around. Everybody just, ah, I remember there was a time now that we are going to the nations. was like, as if, ha, ah, but we believed. We're saying it. Now it's so, it's just oh, the easiest thing. 
God has taken it over from us. We thank God for that. Thank you, uh, our minister, Dr. Mike. The next person, uh, next minister that is coming up is um, Pastor Afolabi Okoyemi Olufayo from the United Kingdom. Can you bring him up, please? Pastor Afolabi, I think he is um, ready. Ah, introduction. Pastor Afolabi Olufayo is a resident of Stock on Trent, England. Mary is a resident of Stoke on Trent, England. Married to Ife Oluwa Deborah. And they are blessed with a son, Winner Ashiwaju. He is currently a network and systems professional. Join me to welcome Pastor Afolabi Ulufayo. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. So, Pastor Afolabi, over to you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Please, can everyone hear me clearly? Okay, please, can you hear me clearly, ma? Thank you, ma. Um, we can hear I you. I want to. Okay. I uh, appreciate daddy and mommy for your training over the years. Like uh, Pastor Mike and Pastor Shegu Seriki said, I also joined the ministry as a student from the year 2009. You know, this road beside, there's a road beside the site, just beside that transformer that goes to High Gem. You know, you see that should be the house opposite redeemed church most of the time you see muslims praying around there i used to live in that house when i was a student from at about 2008 or 2009 when i was coming over early morning c2fm so that was invited to our fellowship then and somehow my heart that was the anglican student fellowship and my heart got knitted with him and god told me at the point to go meet him so when I got to meet him, I didn't know how to say it. I managed, I managed, I managed, and I said, I want you to be my mentor. <laughs> he just smiled and said, okay. just come in two weeks' time. You know, we had most high God. And to the glory of God, I've seen the divine working of God, the training of God, on and on and on over the years. And uh, not only that, this is one of the key things that has preserved me as a believer in the faith. I've had a lot of my friends whom we started together. One of it, my friends then, you see him on, uh, on one of these popular Nigerian pages, now preaching against the gospel. He calls himself a hard man. You know, we're together then. God gave him the revelation on how to solve the electricity problem in Africa as a metallurgical materials engineering student. But today, he's out there preaching vehemently against the gospel. But the mercy of God has preserved me. Fathering has preserved me from errors. And I thank God for that. Uh, number two, I also want to corroborate the fact that the academics you have in your hand, truly, is a great weapon. Do not throw it down irrespective of the challenge you might be going through or whatever you might be facing today as a student. Do not throw it away. Do not despise it. Take it seriously. I also got into the UK as a student. I've been a professional for years. But after so many attempts, I found out that the easiest way I can just come in will be a student to save me of so much stress. So I had to go down again pick up my books, you know, completed my studies, and now I'm working and living in the United Kingdom to the glory of God. Amen. So I'm talking on, I'm speaking on this topic, so thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for your training, teaching, correction, and rebuke over the years. They've kept me strong. They've kept me going. They've kept my head straight in every situation. Amen. So I want to talk on this topic, miracles in difficult places, my personal experience. What do I mean by difficult terrain, a difficult place? These are locations 
where you experience intense hostility to the gospel. And hostility could come in different dimensions. It could be through legal means. And laws are enacted to, against the spread of the gospel. Sometimes it could be spiritual. Sometimes you get to environments, cities, countries, nations, locations, you find it very hard to pray. I mean, very hard to pray. And sometimes it's just the abundance of opportunities for sin, abundance of promiscuity. Daddy used to call it then when we were young. He says, You know, in a lot of environments today, once you leave foot area or prayer area, areas where you have your physical covering, most of the time they welcome you with dimensions of sin. Iniquity is there. If there's an invitation, an open invitation to lure you. And that takes me to some of the things I just want to talk about today that the Holy Spirit has helped us to deal with as a couple and as CTFM group here in the UK. A lot of times we've had to encounter uh, the spirit behind these moves in the realm of the spirit. You know, as a son in the house, I've been with Daddy on several trips within Nigeria and few ones out outside Nigeria too. And, you know, Daddy would just wake us up in the middle of the night or sometimes early morning and say, oh, I saw this revelation, I saw the spirit, I saw this. So I began to understand a different dimension in evangelism. Because a lot of times when we go for those meetings, you might not see thousands or hundreds of people. But we have done a major work in the realm of the spirit then. And Daddy would say, oh, yeah, let's pray this. This is the spirit ruling the land. Let's deal with it and let's begin to pray. <laughs> so, and, you know, funny enough, a few years ago, I began to experience this thing. I was just in my place of work in Nigeria then, in the oil industry. And I was just casually asking the Holy Spirit, what spirit is here? And the Holy Spirit said, the spirit of witchcraft. So it was like a battle line was drawn. And prayer had to begin. Thank God for covering. The battle almost took me out of the feet. And this is another reason why you need covering. You see, if you are sensing the hand of God, upon you in mighty dimensions. If you are not careful, there are a lot of things that will tend to also take you out of the faith. A covering will preserve your destiny. I re-emphasize that again. A covering, a spiritual covering, will preserve you. So what are the things that help us to break through in difficult terrains? Number one is a revelation of the spirit of the land. Today, by the mercy of God, I can categorically say and explain and tell you about what is ruling the Western world. It's a combination of what I call deceiving spirit or intelligent spirit or intellectual spirit. What are intellectual spirit? You find them in the book of uh, Second Timothy, uh, chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, verse one to verse three. Say now the spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons. Let me read. It says, some will depart from the faith. How? Because they gave heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So what are these? Deceiving spirits belong to those category of spirits that they are not the power spirit in the devil's kingdom. They are the intelligent spirit and they are the teaching spirit. That's why it also says deceiving spirit and doctrines of demons. And why did people depart? Because they gave in. So how do they operate? They operate by teaching. I mean, they consistently teach you and tutor you out of your destiny, out of your covering, or out of your faith. You know, they are not of the kind of spirit that you just cast out and the next day they are gone. Sometimes they stay with you for three years, five years. They are convincing you and they are supplying evidences to back up those lies. That's why when you read later, you hear about hypocrisy, lying, and so on. So you see all these questions in the Western world. That's why you have a lot of ideologies, philosophies, ruling the minds of people. But the proponents of these ideologies are actually people that are baptized in the powers of the devil and baptized with his deceiving spirit. So a revelation of the spirit of the land or the territory where you are will help you understand how to deal with them effectively. 
as a believer and rescue the souls that are under. And it will also help you not to come under that spirit. I was in a country at the time that the spirit there is to lure a lady secretly and push her out. I'm sorry if I sound vulgar, but it's real. That was what I was encountering, and that was what was happening around. You see it in the news. The problem in the country is rape. And I realized that this is just not ordinary. It's just a spirit that wants you to engage in that activity and eat the person and become defiled and become neutralized. You know, you no longer can do what God wants you to do. So when you understand how this spirit operates, you can deal with them and ensure that you don't come under such spirit. Number two is non-stop intercession. You see, the concept of intercession in any place or territory, like Pastor Shegun Sariki said, is not something you plan to do for a week or two weeks when you, you just pray, you just pray twelve hours, one day, two days, three days, and you think you've won. No, have a long time plan. Make up your mind for the next five years, ten years. I've been in a territory for over two years. We kept on praying. See you. You know, Daddy gave me some deeper wisdom and said, I'm transferring my mantle to you and go and pray. And under three weeks, the spirit realm I couldn't break through for over a year. Under three weeks, I broke through. And by virtue of that, they sold the company. That was the physical sign for the prayer I was praying. There. So, have a long term plan for intercession. Number three, have a group plan. You see, you win. You conquer as an individual, you may not be able to do much. It might be intense, but having a covering over you and having like minds over you will give you a lot of spiritual boost, energy, encouragement to go on in the journey. Then, the last one unity at home. This is important for us believers and for married couples. Unity. Ensure you have that unity. It will give you protection. It will give you covering. The enemy will try to come in through different means to discourage you, to keep you distracted. But if you can remain united at the home front, it gives a lot of force, energy, even to the spiritual activities you are engaging in at times. And with the, we've had a lot of physical manifestations of these prayers. You know, the, the one thing about intercession is that at some point, you begin to see the physical manifestation of what you are praying for. Just like Paul in the book of Acts, he prayed at the point that people were now uh, the, the seven sons of Sceva, they got into trouble, and people willingly handed over the, 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 the occultism, the secret acts of witchcraft they were engaging in. So we've seen the deliverance of, of a mad woman on the road here uh, in, in the UK, a white woman that ran mad and you know, she was just helpless until I had to go there and minister to her, and she went back home. Uh, we've seen the deliverance of a drug addict. This was when we had a meeting uh, last year, when Daddy came around in Mansfield. It was an opportunity to just quickly reach out to this drug addict on the street, pray for them, and to the glory of God, I've seen, uh, I, I gave her my contact. It was three of them, a lady and two, two men. I, after preaching to them, praying for them, uh, she's homeless together with those two guys into drugs I led them to Christ, cast out the demons and gave them my number and left and she wrote me after a few months that she wants to be reaching out to people on the street she's interested in preaching the gospel as a white person I've seen the manifestation of uh, a white man also You know, his name is Andrew Farmer, I met him in a meeting with a drug addict, he told me that his fire was gone, he doesn't know how to get back into his work, of course that's a lot of things that he has taught us and was able to help him out of that state of bitterness and offenses that kept him down, you know, over the years and kept and, and sniffed out the fire of God and kept him restored. And God has helped us and God is still helping us. We keep praying, we keep intercession against the spirit of civilization, against deceptive, deceptive spirits and their stronghold, and against depression. Depression is a spirit in the Western world. Depression keeps people bound for no reason. You see people, they have everything, have everything, but they are still unhappy. I have colleagues like that, I say, he's not just happy, he's just depressed. And let me tell you the truth, as myself, I've seen it happen to me myself for no reason. I just see myself not just happy, depressed, for no reason. And I begin to pray, I know it's time to pray. It's, it's a warfare in the spirit. 
So what are the things that will help you? A strong spirit. A strong spirit. When you get outside the world, there will be massive opportunities and sometimes massive work to do, sometimes massive opportunities to explore. Keep your spirit strong. Remain connected to the anointed. A lot, when you are there, you will think you are natural. You will think you are normal. The, the first time we went to London, we thought we were just there to enjoy ourselves and you know, preach in a church with less than 20 people. But lo and behold, stepping on there, it was a battle. I didn't know. We didn't know anything. The battle was going on until in the middle of the night when we were praying. And the Holy Spirit came during the worship and said, that thing that happened to you guys during daytime was an attack of the spirit of depression that is ruling the land. Now, you have to start praying. And with that, I had to talk to daddy, talk to mommy, and talk to some people. The Holy Spirit gave me the names of certain people, talk to them, and start the prayer work against the spirit of depression in the land. So what, what am I saying? As a son and daughter of Ogundari, the devil knows you. Go anywhere. I can tell you that. I've been to places. I'm always a first target. Even without preaching, yeah, without anything, you are a target. I've, I've been in places that a girl is just hanging around for me to call on her. She wants me to take her home. And I'm not looking for anything like that. But because the devil knows my address. The devil knows your address. You know, whatever you have, wherever you are, he knows your address. Keep yourself connected. Have a strong spirit. The boy, uh, John the Baptist, continued to work strong in the spirit until the day of his appearing into Israel. The Lord help us and continue to help us to remain strong and accurate in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mom.
What he's saying is very important to people that are traveling out. You go, Ama, Ama, I borrow the locker to lock so that you deal with spirits. You are dealing with spirits. You are dealing with spirits. You know, when we travel at times, you will have just some, just saying, we will be telling you, just be praying and praying and praying and praying this spirit. You are doing something in the atmosphere. Don't just say, you just leave that. At times, you get to an environment. In God's way, I'm married this spirit as if I'm going to go for a few. I'm going to just be seen. I'm going to go for a few. Before you know, you know the, the spirits of animalism. Animalists that are in that country, and you got to deal with it. Different places they have different spirits. But if you are just going, you are going for greener pasture. You know, one young girl, one young lady went to the US, and then you know, daddy used to tell us that when you go to a, a, a country, just pray 90 days and all night. The lady, young lady, got there and was obeying that. In US, so in her room, you know, she just after praying, she just had a dream that one, uh, 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 yeah, one bird. Just he had, she had an encounter with that. Of course, she overcame that bird in the dream. But what happened? That was, that was. They were telling you what follows. See, they in US. Don't I want to go to the US. I want to go and enjoy demons. You think the devil is not? You say walking to and fro. You got to be strong to go there because there can come. You, so that's why you see some marriages are good. Yeah, you are both Christians. You are going. You are doing well. When you get there, you can't just explain why. You can't just. You just begin to feel this. You just begin to talk to each other. Well, this, this, that. You got to be strong in the spirit and take authority. Over that spirit, it's not just greener pasture, so that you don't go there for greener pasture, and then you lose some good things that God has given you here. This is these people are telling us things firsthand. Praise the Lord, and I believe we have been blessed by that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! So Daddy can come and uh, uh, Daddy, let me welcome Daddy. sit down. You can sit down, please. I know we have been blessed, but I just, just want to put uh, some things together. I, I minister so much in Yoruba that you would think I don't know English. When I minister in English, you will not know whether I know Yoruba. I can flow in both. You understand what I'm saying? And um, So, when I speak and I speak in our language, it's because I know I'm talking to you. And you will understand me in our language more. So I can later now interpret it to them who are listening from outside. Are you getting it? So I have a saying that Koboro, Koto Lozi Boro. Oro Tobani Loafi Chia Boro, Itation, Bibo Lati Boro. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, what that means is that. Get anointed before you step out. Those are my sins. So those they look ordinary. Very early in the morning, we talk to one another, share the word of God. But what I was putting inside of you then was order, strength, stamina. Before you think of going to nations, you need strength, you need stamina. the room. What do I need microphone for to talk to you in my room? Are you getting what I'm saying? It's that people think that's the reason why the devil you just back it. Okay. Tie on where a shoe left young 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I like to put something in you that the devil can't handle. Everything physical, the devil can handle it. But he can't handle the depth of God inside your spirit. And that is what will determine whether you will make it when you get out there or not. Anything physical, God can add it to your life in a day. You understand what I'm saying? One day, preach well, you can come out with 35 suits. One day, you preach so well in America. And people started saying, follow us to supermarket. Let's give you 30 suits in a day. You can have it. But the day you are acquiring what will give you that suit, you may not have one jacket. But having jacket when you should have anointing will hang you. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, but as natural people, physical people, we like to relate with physical things more than the spiritual. But the spiritual is the baba for the physical. When you say man fell, where did he fall? He fell from the realm of the spirit and became intellectual. He fell from spirit realm to soulish realm. It's a spirit man, but he suddenly became a, a, a soulish instead of spirit. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. When you should be ruled by your spirit and you are being ruled by your mind, you are not developing, you are not advancing. Praise God. The ruler in the realm of the spirit is your spirit. When you get born again, your spirit must come back alive to God. And that spirit should be cultured. It should be trained on how to rule and reign over your brain, over your soul, over your body. That's the real education that man should have is the education of his spirit man. But there's no place where people teach spirit or spiritual things except church. They teach you intellectual things in school. They teach you things about physical body in uh, gym. So you can become you know, macho and uh, gay and give somebody one shot, bah, and the person land on the ground. You collect money, okay? You are good athletics. That's sports. It's only training your physical self. But even in the school, you can be a prof and still you are involved in fornication with small, small girls. So professor doesn't deliver you from that. You can be a prof at the same time you are babalawo. So you wear white, white. So you are more or more issue than or more, or more education. Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying? But some people don't know that. They just think life is ordinary. You'll be stupid to think that Wale Shoyinka is just an educated person. You'll be very stupid and dumb. Yes. It's no bad laureate. Fine. That's what the world know. But here we know ourselves. Praise God. So somebody can be a professor. He gave you correct knowledge of how to make it academically. But he also has some spirits in his life. So we need to develop what will make us spiritual. Not what will make us intelligent. But that does not mean we are inferior in education either. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I deliberately have to read. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I know that my future will be rugged and I will need a rugged person to go through it. If you are not rugged, if you are sophisticated, chan, 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 you can't follow me. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, I'm from where I'm going to is far and the journey is going to take us a long time before we arrive there. So you need stamina to follow me. But when we get there, I don't want them to think I didn't go to school too. So you want my bameka, nyama loeria, you want my kalo, oti ja oti kato tu kasi. Sama kalo. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Maka, maka, ma worry. No, you are keeping my bank loan. Ma worry, maka, maka. I'm boss. If you want, I'm okay. Keke, if you want, I'm a trainer. I'm a mowa. Maka, maka, maka. Cause problem. So that one, you don't pay me law school. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But my brother, she bung la drop loan ni bai. Kan yoku ma bakiri. Cause ni ekon la lewa. So when we were there, people thought, ah, oh, shake ni to, oh, move ma hua agba. Ko le debi ka mbo lelo. 
Quand ils ont trop combattu, ils ont fait un marché chez Director, ou aller te les mouvements. On va aller sur le mot Félix Cosme. On va aller sur le mot Tony PhD. On va aller sur le mot Was Academic as them. Il y a un peu de politique. It's because you want to be something. Lo shelo fara e son dine kan. To wa occultic or something. To go ba le mentor e ki wo no le great o ti wa wa la be. Niyan ti kuro lora academics. Praise God. So at the time that God need us, it's easy to leave because my heart was not there. If you are put all your life there, you won't get out. You can't get out. The system has embedded you so much you can't leave the system. But when God was your number one, before you started everything in academics, the day God needs to drop it, you will drop it without feeling it. But if academic is your life, you will live around campus till you die. Praise God. And you grow white hairs. And you still be proud that if you fail my course, I will... <laughs> Well, well, in if I do this, I cast you, I cast your destiny. <laughs> if I cast you there, I just cast your destiny straight. If I fail you here, you, the life is not only around that four wall of university. Life is more than that. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But because his whole life is inside that place, he thinks he's in his own small world. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just make a big. Oh boy, get outside. You find out that nobody even knows you went to school. You have to explain to them. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you see, all we have learned from all these people, the three of them today, they are, the three of them that are minister today, they are people with intellectual caliber. You understand know what I'm saying? So, and they finish from here. So they all are people we can relate with. That one says, So, one more, the book He was, that time we carry Shia from that place. We carry it on our head and carry it. So one day as he was passing by, somebody called him, ah, they got to tell your guy to help you get one job. You see, come back here and carry here. <laughs> but at that time, they didn't know that I was already working in Eket. But it just came because we have a program. Yeah, I had gone to India and come back before that time. They didn't know. The man didn't know. He just thought that uh, he's still a simple Because people, people relate with only what they can see, physical. If it's not physical to them, it's not meaningful. But life is more than that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Life is more than that. But if you are not in a place where God can train you with those things I'm talking about, you will think you are missing out. But nobody ever come around me and make you feel you are missing out. No. The other one talking about academics, that uh, even if you think you are not academically good, come around by, by something about academics we should talk. That's very correct. Somebody has done exam here and score 104. And he need 200 to enter footer. So, and they now told him that, go and meet that. <laughs> what did you expect me to do? I'm not a lecturer in the university. <laughs> she said, I should go and help you to beg me. I said, uh, I said, what I know is I can pray. Bring your head. I pray for her in Jesus' name. Don't worry, you enter. Uh, with one of her, don't worry, no worry. So by the time, it's just a little time to really now go in. Everybody now started checking. The brother, both of them were a woman, a woman. That other one went and checked, and he checked and said, ah, I want to pass. But what about you? He said, I want to check. I want to. <laughs> so the other one now went there to check for his sister and found out it's called 214. From jam score from 104 to 214. So God added what? 110. More than 104 that is called. Don't clap on the day out. Don't let them hear there. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? But that is to make you to understand that there is nothing God cannot undo. Even academics can undo it. My wife was doing PhD here in the days of uh, 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 this kind of computer desktop computer and you have to finish your, your job on that see work of like seven years or five years was inside that computer and oh crack oh crash 
when you have not submitted and they think, ah, it's basically a <laughs> what am I going to tell people? Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> so, what did we do? After we have gone to places, they said, Do you have backup? Ba? I don't have any back. Ah! So, everything is there. Yes, so, ah! So, we started, What are we going to do? Finally, finally, when nobody found a solution, well, I know God. Pastor, yeah, pray. So, I'm calling a pastor friend. We pray. We just lay hand on the computer. Ah, bro. <laughs> Jesus spoke to the tree. Jesus spoke to the wind. Jesus spoke to the storm. I burn you. <laughs> Pray on computer. Computer, I <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why? Spiritual is superior to everything. Everything. So don't let somebody make you feel as if, ah, is it only this clapping of hands, cha-cha-cha-cha-cha you are doing? Somebody was stupid enough to come and meet us here this morning and say that, and this stuff, one of the how can you walk into the house of a lion and you are a goat? Yeah, you are a chicken. You want to harass a lion that I uh, uh, <laughs> say it's running too much. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't you don't know what you think I'm a student. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? If they are doing party here for seven days, nobody's going to stop anybody. But I'm praying in tongues, said me, Jacobson. Professor Fanali. Praise God. Give Jesus a clap of praise, somebody. I, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to know that God has been doing some serious work in the life of people here. And you take your time. To make sure you sit down well, listen, learn. If you need to come to our school for training, I will train you. That's my job. Are you getting that? When a general trained you, even if you are a recruit, you will eventually become a general. Somehow, somehow. Praise God. But training doesn't take one day. It takes a process. Time. Time. So I can guarantee you that if you start now, my Bible school is only three weeks or one year. Abro, have you heard of Elijah? Elijah, how many weeks? <laughs> you, <are laughs> you heard of Jesus Christ and his disciples? Nobody graduated. <laughs> so even all of them that you are still looking at, they are still. I, when I get to UK, they all come around me. Baba, what are we? I teach them again. Moshe Koyinde, Moshe apply and I'm but it's day lure compared to. That so they'll still land again and then go back. One of the testimonies he didn't give very well uh, is the one that he ministered to a mad person. That's uh, uh, Afolabi. Afolabi Olufa. He ministered to a mad person. So let me tell you that and then we'll run off for today. So they, what happened? This is their house. Opposite the road, you have a supermarket, right? And that supermarket, a woman went there to buy things and came out. As soon as he get out, you either go to your car, what you brought, take it to your car, or you go to a, a moving vehicle that will take you to where you are going back to your house. That's all. But when he got out, he brought out the basket and started pouring it on the ground. And then started talking around, talking around that. All that he bought, he was just talking around, she bought, talking around it and scattering it all over and talking and talking and shouting. So definitely you know something has happened. Now, she kept on doing that for a few minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours. Nobody did anything. Everybody was just passing by. So the, uh, he, the husband, just went to somewhere and came back and found that the wife now said, three years. So the two of them now decided, what are we going to do? Ah, this is a Yibo land, and this is a Yibo person. But daddy said, we must preach to white, not black. Hello? Hello? I said, if you live here to go and preach to black people in UK, that means, oh, the black preach in Nigeria. Why one want to see? So to me, you are not a missionary. I don't mission anything. 
the people that you can't get here, that it's, it's, you have to travel out there to get them, is the people that is the mission field. So I train them how to break the barrier of people say we shouldn't talk to them. People say, no, power, not theory. Power is how to talk to anything about it. Hello? Hello? Um, in normal way, in the way, my by is already so sure that the only one will But when it is power, nobody, the message of power, the message of love, the message of money, those three things, nobody can say no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, what? You we can't say no. In fact, they can use it to buy your soul because she, if you told they lie, your work can buy you. Except you have a determination inside of your heart that no, I will not be, you can't sell my soul. But if they offer you a particular amount, that's what entertainment people used to say. If the price is right, I only go go listen straight. To wo eba what ye? Kini go go. You think I can? I can ni na ni madek bo mi moti bo tan ma le wash letter go problem. So if the money is right, people can some people can buy your destiny. So the same thing, love. When you show it to somebody, it can buy the person with time. He doesn't know why it just fall for you. It's because of love. So the language of love, you can't escape it. The language of power, you can't escape it. The language of money, you can't escape it. So all the three, we need that. So now I started training and teaching them on how to apply power. Nobody can stop power from manifesting. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the two of them now concluded, let's go and preach to this woman or cast out that devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. So I, they said that is the other side of the road. So he was staying at this side and talking to the lady at the other side of the road. Come on, you. Are you getting what I'm saying? You woman that is rolling under the name of Jesus, I bind that devil that is making you to do this. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. He kept on saying it. Finally, the lady turned and looked. I say, yes, that spirit on you, I bind it. And she became calm. And now started picking all her things on the ground. Back in the basket, and then was now moving away. Now, when we are crossover, Loba, when she's now going to, how to become normal, how to buy spirit in your way, spirit in your way, so what become normal? What she what love back? What she what means a salvation see? What by Jesus knew? God told her the same thing. But God told her God did not deliver you. Oh my God! But she like one of people. You talk about you go to pay. They will call our nanny. You come and carry you. Now that they carry me, when you be a lawyer, you come to my bank. We want law asylum. But they are here. See, finally. So we got we told them deliver it from here. It's not ordinary. So listen. We told you in the same way. Money Jesus show me. I'm Catholic. Catholic call. But of bad correct, correct. It's a good bag by me. Praise God. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now let her to Christ correctly. And then, do you want to learn more about this? So, of course, I would like to train you more about that later. So we meet. That's how the minister to the person. And it became so. Next time I came and they were telling me, I said, You see, I told you that the only way you can handle this evil is by power. Uh, a man of God, I think uh, Jesse uh, Jerry Savel, no, no, Jesse Duplantis, was in the plane and then he sat beside somebody at the plane and then see that Holy Ghost called Ruko Obedin Kansuria, Okunini, but long called Ruko Obedin Suria by Katun Ri in the name of the Spirit, maybe Janet or something. Okay, so one, hey, my guy, who is Janet? <laughs> You know, Oba, oh, that man grabbed the hand and said, Let's go to the restroom. What are you talking about? How do you know Jenny? Where do you know you want to? My wife is sitting by my side. You are talking about Jenny. Jenny is my girlfriend. It's my. Uh, huh? Where did you see that one? Eh, I saw it written in your face. And if you are not born again, that lady will destroy your life. Ah! <sighs> so, okay. But if you are not, I will tell your wife now. Oh, please, I want Jesus. I want Jesus now. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the power of God. You can't say no to power. You understand what I'm saying? Power will penetrate anybody, whether he likes you or doesn't like you. Stand up. May God baptize you with the spirit of power. So I'd like you to talk to God today. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Father, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. 
something new in my life today do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life today before we close this morning are you there you have been hearing all that is going on and you want to say lord here am i use me like you are doing in the life of these ones i want to enlist say i need to be a part of this thing it will take a process but i'm ready for the process you want to say here am i lord use me in this dimension get me to this kind of flow get me to this kind of life that is the ultimate purpose of this gathering so i'd like you to raise up your hand i want to pray for you if that is your situation you want this kind of teaching and training in your life it is a recruiting process after the recruit then the training will begin and the work will take some time but you have to dedicate yourself people are already putting down their names since yesterday uh, at the end i'm going to talk to all of them and call them together and minister to them then tell them the process that is required but just need your intention your decision i want this i want to be a part of that raise up your hand i'm going to pray for you if you are online then get across to them those people over there they are going to uh, get us your name and then uh, your uh, phone number and then we'll reach out to you when it is time to begin the training all right father in the name of jesus we thank you today say lord accept this little time with you we start around six o'clock and this is eight o'clock thank you heavenly father we pray that the anointing will keep on increasing and we are technicality and the technical crew will keep on getting better so that we can do this thing excellently and your name be glorified but the word you have brought to us today rich and solid we take them and we say we are going to walk in the fullness of that in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name we pray the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all in jesus name 6 p.m tonight we meet god bless you Five, 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 five. Six in the morning, five in the evening.